Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. This is going to be the last video in programming the Zometry mill test part. If we take a look at what I've done so far, I'm gonna highlight my three operations. I'm going to hit the simulate button and I'm gonna start on the third operation. You can see that if I go a little farther, faster, gets rid of that, the excess material, kind of gets it to net near shape. It starts to drill the holes and get the holes finished up. So we're gonna see the hole drilling and tapping. Gonna get rid of the material between the two faces and then it's gonna finish up the floor and counter bore the hole, getting that to size. That leaves us with just doing the surfacing operation Oh, in the areas where you see the blue. So that's what we're gonna work on next. I'm gonna exit my simulation. And when I do balling milling operations, a lot of times what I want is I don't want the tip of the tool to exactly start and finish on the geometry. I like to start off and finish off. And unfortunately, there's not a lot of good ways to do that in Fusion right now, automatically in the tool path, but there's a fairly simple workaround that we can do where I'm gonna go back to the design workspace and then I'm gonna switch to the surface workspace. And I'm gonna do something called an offset surface. So from the create menu, I'm gonna choose offset. And I like to make sure that I have this chain selection off so that I can click on my faces that I want. And I'm just gonna click on all of the different faces that I want to make an offset surface for. So those four, and then I'm gonna click okay. And I'm gonna do a zero offset. So basically, if I were to go to my bodies folder and turn off my zometry part, you see I have an exact copy of that top face. And now that I have an exact copy of that face as a surface, I want to extend it. And so I'm just gonna click on my two edges. So I'm gonna click on this edge and this edge. And sometimes what I have to do is hold down the controller command to grab that second one. And I'm gonna offset this one 30 thousandths of an inch. And I'll hit okay. And I have to do that, unfortunately, individually each time. Again, don't be afraid to hold down controller command if you can't get it to select the other edges that you want. So I'm gonna repeat my extension for that edge and that edge. And right click and repeat the extension one more time for that edge and that edge, and then I'll hit OK. So now if I turn on my body, you can see I have surfaces that are slightly larger than the actual physical model that I want to machine. I'm gonna do one more extension across the bottom, and I think I'm okay with the 30 thousandths of an inch. We can always check it in the simulation and see if I'm gonna hit the vice jaws or not. If I am, we'll make an adjustment to that extension amount. So let's go ahead and click on all four of those edges right there and I'll hit okay. So now, again, if I turn off my, if I turn on my model, you can see I have a surface that's slightly larger than the actual model surface. I'm gonna turn the visibility of these off and then I'll just minimize that to make that a little bit smaller. I'm ready to go back to manufacture and the servicing tool path that I'm gonna use for this particular slope face is gonna be parallel. So from, from the 3D dropdown, I'm gonna select parallel and then I wanna go grab a tool. Now the tool I wanna to grab is gonna be a quarter of an inch ball mill. I can either grab that, I had it in my document already or I could go get it out of the milling tools folder. I guess the milling tools is where I got this out of. And then I'm gonna select the stainless steel finishing preset and I'll choose select. Now for the geometry, I wanna go and say I wanna do selections and then I'm gonna choose a chain. I might need to have my visibility on for this, so I'm gonna expand, expand out my bodies and turn on my visibility of my bodies. Now I can go and grab the edges of the body that I want. I'm gonna click on both of those and I'm looking down at the bottom to see I have one continuous rectangle and I'll hit okay. I'm gonna do a new chain. And for this, I'm only gonna select the two chains on this side of the part. I'm not gonna grab all four of the slope faces. And I'll hit okay. For the additional offset, I'm gonna do negative tolerance, TOL, and I'll select that from the dropdown. I'll put a link to a video that explains what this negative tolerance is about. I'm also gonna check the box for contact point boundary. Over on the passes tab, I'm gonna set my step over amount that I want to be 0 0.01. And the last thing I wanna do in the linking tab is do a minimum retraction. Now when I hit okay, I know this toolpath isn't gonna to be right, but I'll go back and show you how you're gonna fix it. So I'll hit okay, and what we should see is the toolpath covers way more surface than I want it to. And the reason for that is I didn't tell Fusion that these surfaces are part of the model that it has to machine. I just told it, a larger boundary to look for, and now it's trying to grab these other model services with the side of the tool. So I'm gonna edit my parallel, and on the geometry tab, I need to tell Fusion that those patch services are model services. So I'm just gonna go grab them out of the bodies folder, and when I put my mouse over them, see how they highlight? And I'll just go grab that last, um, oh, got the wrong one go grab that last face that I want right there. And as I hover over it, it should highlight to tell me that I'm on it. 
That's not the right one. There it is. So we'll take that one back off. So there's my two surfaces that I want to machine. Now when I hit the OK button, Fusion does a nice clean toolpath over those two surfaces for me. I've got a nice extension. If I want to, I can find those two surfaces and turn them off. And I see just the toolpath riding across that surface. I may also want to check if I do a simulate here, I grabbed the wrong one. If I simulate that and I say all toolpath instead of tail, and I put my mouse down here, one of the things I want to check if I look from the side is that I have clearance between the tip of my ball mill and the vice jaws, and it looks like I'm going to have plenty of clearance at that point. I'll exit the simulation. Actually, I'm going to hit play and we can see what this is going to do. Note that when I hit play, it starts from the bottom and works its way back up to the top. And then it's going to go down a little bit to finish up that last little area right there. And then we're going to come over and it's so on both of these, it starts from the bottom and goes to the top. You might be wondering why I didn't grab these other two surfaces at the same time. And the main reason for that, if I duplicate this, I'll go to this parallel operation, and edit it. And now my geometry, I'm going to throw away my machining boundaries and my bodies. I'm going to grab new machining boundaries on this side and I'll grab that and that and I'll hit OK. We're going to do one more chain and I'll grab this edge and that edge, making sure my rectangle encompasses everything. I'll hit OK. And then now for my model surfaces, I got to grab my last two faces that I want to be model surfaces and I'll hit OK. And basically I get the exact same tool path, but there's one minor difference. If I simulate this, it starts from the top and goes to the bottom. I like to go from the bottom to the top to get a better surface footage where the tool does a better job contacting the material and machines it a little bit nicer. I'm recording this insert well after I recorded the original video because as I was editing this video, I realized I never showed you how to make the tool go from top down to bottom up. So let's take a look at what that is and then we'll continue finishing this part up. If I grab this parallel operation, you can see it's going down to the bottom and it comes over and it goes, uh, down again. So I want it to go up and up. I'm going to edit this toolpath and on the passes tab, I'm going to go find the pass direction. And instead of zero degrees, I'm going to enter 180 degrees. So same vector, different direction. Now, when I hit okay, we'll see that instead the tool starts at the bottom, goes to the top, comes back over, starts at the bottom and goes to the top. So sorry for not originally including that. I'm going to dump the snippet in and now I return you to the original video. So there I have my four faces machine. Again, I don't need to see these last uh, patches anymore. And that's the way that I get my tool to extend past the part. Now I can hear some of you are saying, well, what if I want my, what if I want my surfacing tool path to go the long way across instead of going left to right? If I copy this operation and paste it so it ends up at the end of my operation, I can just go to my parallel, I'll edit this, and then the only change you need to make is on the passes tab, instead of going zero degrees, I can put in 90 degrees or 270 degrees. And that way, now it's going to go the long way. So that should finish up the machining of those services on our Zometry mill test part. Thanks for sticking through it with me on these four videos. I hope you found them useful. If you would make any changes or have any questions for me, please leave them in the comments below. I like it when you guys leave comments and we can talk back and forth a little bit more about these. It lets me know you guys are watching. And a lot of times you guys bring up good points and it's good for other people to read what's happening. And as always, thanks for watching.